Today, I'm going to build a private and secure smart home from scratch, then stupidly give up my privacy by letting GPT-4 in the front door. Here's what almost every day of my life looks like. Wake up at 5 a.m., turn on my lights, microwave a breakfast hot pocket, check on the baby, turn on computer and wait 10 minutes for Windows to update, write some code, make a YouTube video, microwave a lean pocket, open the door for friendly strangers, join a new religion, boil wash water the dishes, tea, turn microwave out the lights, a premium and hot repeat pocket. the cycle. It's a beautiful life, but highly inefficient. Every time I turn on a light, it takes 500,000 microseconds out of my day. Over the course of a year, that's like two weeks spent just turning on lights. Luckily, there's a free and open source tool called Home Assistant that can automate and control all of the technology in our homes. In today's video, we'll build a smart home from scratch and look at all the crazy things people do with home automation. But most importantly, we'll keep all the data private to your home network, which means hackers and feds can't spy on you. Then we'll completely break that rule by giving our data to OpenAI to integrate it with ChatGPT, giving us a glimpse into what a next generation smart home might look like. But first, we've got a huge giveaway thanks to our awesome sponsor sponsor Bridge. They're a startup that's building a protocol that enables IoT devices powered by Bluetooth low energy to leverage the cloud. What's awesome though is that these smart devices don't need to be fitted with cellular or Wi-Fi connectivity. Instead, they use mobile apps as an internet gateway to effectively bridge data between the internet and the IoT device. And that's huge because it means you can now build IoT products without the need for cellular or Wi-Fi on your hardware. I've been playing around with it myself with an ESP32 microcontroller. And now you can too because Bridge is shipping out hundreds of these boards for free right now. Once you have one, you just install the firmware, download the demo app, and then you can start securely storing interactions like inputs from a sensor on the backend ledger as part of the bridge protocol. And if you manage to build something cool, you could even connect it to your home assistant, which we're going to set up right now. But first, what is home assistant exactly? It's a free and open source project written in Python that allows you to control all the technology in your home locally, where your privacy can be protected. It runs a UI on your local network where you can manage all these devices and automate them based on different events that happen in the world. This can all be done without writing any code, or you can write your own custom blueprints in YAML. It has a huge community, and people do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. It can do simple things like cook your hot pocket when you wake up, or turn your entire house into a rave when the sun goes down. The possibilities are endless, so let's go ahead and get it set up. You'll first need a dedicated server or machine to host it. It could be an old computer you have laying around, and Home Assistant runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux, but I think the ideal option is a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4, which are very hard to come by as of today, but it works just as well on a Pi 3. In addition to the Pi itself, you'll want to make sure you have a good power supply, an Ethernet cable, and a micro SD card with at least 32 gigabytes. But the more memory you have, the better, especially if you plan on storing video data. And then finally, you'll need a way to read an SD card like a USB micro SD reader. And now we can move on to step two, installing Home Assistant on the Pi. Plug your SD card into your primary computer, then download the Raspberry Pi Imager program. This is an official Raspberry Pi tool that'll help you download the right operating system. Click on Choose OS, then go to other specific purpose, then home automation, then home assistant, and then you should see the distro for the Raspberry Pi 4 or 3. Go ahead and select the one for your model, then click on choose storage and select your SD card. Now click right, and it will download, install, and verify that operating system on the SD card. When that's done, you can pop it out and insert it into the Pi. And now in step 3, we can take the Pi, connect it to the power supply, then use the ethernet cable to connect it to your Wi-Fi router. It'll take a few minutes to boot up, but you should now be able to access the home assistant website from your local network. And you'll also likely want to install the Home Assistant iOS or Android app to control your house from your phone. The first time you access it, it'll take you through the onboarding process where you create a username and password. Once that's done, it will take you to the dashboard. Then from here, you'll likely want to go to the settings tab and then link up any smart devices you have in your home, like Casa plugs, your Nest thermostat, Zigbee switches, Roombas, dishwashers, cameras, and so on. Once you have a device connected, you can then control it manually. Some devices are simple, like a smart plug you can just turn on and off with a switch, but other devices are more complex, like my smartphone has all kinds of different sensors and I can access them to do something in my home when something changes on my phone. Like maybe when the battery level gets low, I trigger a shock caller to remind myself to plug it back in. Home Assistant is all about doing automations like this. If we go to the Automations tab, the first thing you'll need to automate something is a trigger. This could be a certain time on the calendar, it could be an event like when a button is clicked somewhere, it could be a message passed from some other device using MQTT, it could be a webhook from some external service, and a variety of other patterns. From there, you can optionally add conditions to make sure the trigger is only activated if a certain condition is met. Like maybe you don't want to run any alarms if it's the middle of the night. And then finally, an action is the thing that should happen when the trigger occurs. Most often, this will be something on a device, like maybe you want to switch a plug on or off, or you might want to send a push notification to your phone. That's pretty cool, but sometimes you might have a lot of actions that you want triggered all at once. Like in my case, I don't want my kids getting out of bed before 7am, so I programmed a system 
that lets them know when it's time. At exactly 7 a.m., their light bulbs turn green, their speaker plays Eye of the Tiger, the printer prints them a list of chores, kitchen starts making breakfast, and the Roomba follows them around to clean up any messes. And pretty soon I'll be able to hook up a full self-driving Tesla to it to automatically drive them to school. To organize that more efficiently, I created a scene. A scene allows you to organize the state of multiple devices in a single place. That means you can reactivate that scene from multiple triggers or do it manually with a single click. But sometimes a scene is not enough. With scripts, you can create an entire sequence of events. Occasionally, I want my house to go into party mode, where the lights fade in and fade out and flash different colors. But to make that happen, we need to code in some delays and other patterns to synchronize all the lights. We can implement this logic entirely from the Home Assistant UI, or if you're more comfortable with code, everything can be represented in YAML. But what's really awesome about the code is that it can be shared with other people. There are all kinds of Home Assistant blueprints that give you pre-configured functionality so you don't have to do all this stuff manually. Like you just import a blueprint to manage your solar panels, make some minor changes, and you're done. There's so much cool stuff to do here, and I could go on and on. But now, I want to give up my home privacy to my AI overlords at OpenAI. If you go to the Integrations tab, you'll find all kinds of different services and APIs that you can integrate into your workflow. One of which is an OpenAI integration giving us access to GPT-4. It simply takes our API key and then formats a prompt with the current data or state of our smart home. From there, on the Home Assistant dashboard, you'll notice a chat icon that allows us to access ChatGPT within the context of our own home. We can ask it questions about the current state of the home, but currently it can't take control over the home. Although I think you can see where this is going in the near future. Dean Koontz, an author who wrote about the Wuhan 400 virus in the 80s, also wrote a book called Demon Seed in 1977 that describes a hyper-intelligent smart home that locks a lady inside and has her bear its child. So you might want to be a little extra cautious when inviting GPT-4 into your smart home. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.